much talking. I have 20 minutes with you guys, and I want to cover a little bit. My name is Billy Brown. I own Progressive Martial Art Training Systems here in Orlando, Florida. Uh, real quick history on me. I started uh, martial art training in uh, 1984. My father was my first uh, martial art instructor. Uh, he was actually the first person to put a weapon in my hand, although as a kid, as, as, uh, as you said, we were just playing. I didn't know he was a, I didn't know he was trying to take a value for it for um, My father passed away when I was 11 years old, and I went through a very bad depression because that connection we had uh, was through the martial arts. My mother knew that. So she threw a phone book at me one day when I didn't want to go to school for three weeks after he passed. And she said, pick a martial arts school. So from there, I went into Taekwondo. I didn't know any better. Um, <laughs> although I do not regret my Taekwondo years. Taekwondo, I, I was lucky to get at a good Taekwondo school that liked to just hit hard. And uh, it wasn't anything about competition. It was just about the art. It was about combat. Uh, so that really, that discipline really helped me. Uh, in, in 1993, I walked into the dojang and saw this little old round man stick choking people and head butting people and elbowing people and I'm like, I'm your student now. <laughs> and that was my start with FMA and Jeet Kune and Muay Thai and all the other arts that I teach today. Uh, we're going to do a, a Spada Daga today. I'm going to show you the way we, uh, we, we do it. The, the name of the system is Magla Hook Kali. I use the term Magla Hook because it means to blend. I, I wish it meant mud. Because that's kind of what I am. I, I have so I've trained with 12 different Filipino martial arts instructors, and uh, I kind of utilize uh, all of that into what I do. Okay, so she sticks her arms out like Mr. Anatomy Man. Obviously, best case scenario, we don't want to be in the middle. We want to be outside. We actually want to zone to zero pressure. True zero pressure is here. But we, but in a perfect world, once you get down to the hand to the elbow, to the shoulder, to the back, that's where we want to be. So I'm going to show you some ways to zone and get to the weapon bearing limb on the side of it, and then we'll handle the knife. The first way is what we call the spike. See, we number one. See, this goes in, and this is inside of the structure. Very slowly. What I'm trying to do is clip the hand, always. The spike is a very subtle move. Works really well with a bladed weapon. It works good with a blood weapon also. So I spike it. When I do this, again please, I spike it staple. This, I don't staple this way, I staple this way. I'm monitoring the weapon bearing limb. Then this is just the end of the structure. Does that make sense? This is the first one that I want you to do. So it goes one, staple, and hitch. One, staple, thread the weapon. Good time. Staple, thread the weapon. That's the, that's the prefix, that's the entry of the possible. We'll move on from there. Can we get that far? Let's do it. Still doing the staple, so it goes one. I can double tap it if I'm really long, or I can just single stay it. Right? We know that. So I'm going to teach you this side, and we're going to work on the knot. So one staple, it, get it. From here, I monitor that hand always. Press this out. Now we're ready for the knife in. We'll handle that in a second. One staple thread. This continues to cut the line. Does that make sense? This continues to hit. All of the hitting that never stops, man. All right? Thread it. Not this. You have a structural problem. Press it. And then put in your top chunks. All right? That's the first step. Get that? All right. Get it. Come into here. All right. So watch. So it goes here. See, I go here. I enter, enter. I monitor this side as I cut through. The cuts are still there, man. I go here. I can still hit. Still. You follow me? So that way I didn't have to use the other weapon. And that's good for the guy ties go. So right here. Ha, ha, same that would be it. Ha, ha, you follow me? So it's good if the other hand is tied up. Alright, so that's the next dish we're watch. So go one, two, three, four. Zero pressure is what we call it. Sometimes we cannot. So the number one comes, I have to meet it here, but then I just give away with it. You hear the term cambiata. Now listen, the light bulb with the cambiata went off uh, in my head about 15 years ago. I was I was seeing Guru Dead and Sato do this on video. You know, he's the king of smooth, but I couldn't pull it off in full contact spark. And uh, so I just kept trying, kept trying. And the revelation came to me one day that. It actually came from another art. I was training Jeet Kune Do. 
another art that I teach. In Jeet Kune Do, we're not like a Wing Chun man. We don't pull back to trap. If you can see the energy, where am I going? And then I just go forward. So it's almost like a coiled rubber band ready to explode. So it's, it's here. Let's keep this hand up. So it's here that the, 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 the forward motion stays. So watch. I hope do it this way. Let me make it really go. Better. Oh, that's scary. Now give me good. I go into the structure. I press so it's like that slow motion. Does that make sense at all? Okay. When you add it with the stick and dagger, press it to the structure. That still monitors. That's still the shot. Now we're going to handle the other side. Okay. So we'll do it super slow. Just the prefix. One, two, three, four, and then handle you this one. Can we get there? All right. So for incidental, if not accidental. Yes, sir. <laughs> the biggest part of this, I'm showing you this for the art, for the movement. The biggest part is to wrap the guy, just get the hitting and thrusting and cutting and, and hitting. Does that make sense? Okay, so the number one comes. I still, now you have two possible, two entry. First one is the spike. You're going to get to the same destination. Second one is the cambiata. When I hit this, this is a sword technique. Grab the sword. Quick, 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 quick. Hold on. No more. <laughs> so when I do this kamiata, see from here to here, I don't want to wrap it completely, so I just so from here I just wrap here. You see it? Now when I press down, this goes right into the liver. It's already there. Now when the knife hand comes low, it's already monitored. If it comes high, it's monitored already. Does that make sense at all? It's already into the structure. So when you duplicate that with the stick, I don't just hit to hit it. I don't just do this. Because I still have to handle this, and this is going to suck way, way more than that blunt instrument. So I go here. This is in. She comes low. This is into the brachial plexus. Because the brachial plexus kills the orange, but it doesn't kill the man. If I need to enter lethally, I can. It goes here. The first one is just make a C. Now, I don't stay here for that other hand. I'm going to zone with it. Does that make sense? So that's the very first disarm we're going to do with the knife. So if I was just to isolate the knife hand, so it goes here to here, break your places. I'm moving, zoning to zero pressure. Does that make sense? And then add your own follow-up shots. Here it is, the key to disorders. I'm gonna tell you, I got a very simple formula. I was, I had the unfortunate fortune to see violence and be part of violence uh, sometimes on a nightly basis for 20 years. I worked club doors across America and I worked the private security sector for a long time. And I also uh, did a little bodyguard work for Brooks and Dunn and George Jones, which I saw zero action. But it was fun. Um, um, the biggest thing that I learned because I've had, I've been cut multiple times, I've also was unlucky enough to have to use my blade one time to end an altercation. This is what I learned. If you want to pull this off, this one's off in the street. Hit before, hit during, hit after. Simple formula. Hit before, hit during, and then hit after. Anybody can fight a disorder, but if you stroke him in the jaw or finger tab or thumb his eyes or head buddy, kick him in the balls, he's going to drop that weapon. So, I hit before, hit during, hit after. Does that make sense? Yeah. Make your signature follow-up. Whatever it is, never quit the game once the disorder's happened. Always hit before. All right, let's give that a go. I love this kind of a bit because it's a brotherhood. It's not a competition is what I'm trying to say. We all are in, we're, Filipino martial arts is how small of the world and as far as martial art community goes. You get what I'm saying? So we need to all kind of stick together. So I love this place. I'm always there. I'm tipping it to you guys. And I have a big online presence. I sell videos around the globe. Um, so yeah. So watch. She's going to enter. Any one of the enters. She enters. Yes. This cuts low. She goes. Now watch. Sorry. <laughs> Y'all say I teach fast. 
So as soon as she snakes the stick, I know she's got it. I, I, it's, it's, it's stupid to try to fight it. Okay. This goes into the armpit. Now watch, I don't disarm straight. For every action, equal to opposite reaction. Watch what I do with her body when I when I thread the blade. Disarm. What, it made this go further. Now I got, if she comes high, I can handle it. But right now we'll keep it the low shot because that's what we've all been doing. And I handle it. I still thread it. Mm -hmm. Last one. The only thing you're going to have to do different is this. She does it. Soon as she goes for the disarm, right when this stick's about to hit, this makes a circle. Yeah. That's my that's my All right. Any questions? Last one. Let's finish it up. Good job, guys.